May 22nd, 1965. Ratcliffe Stadium, Fresno, California. If you missed it the first time, see it soon. Only on ABC 30, Action News at 11. May 22nd, 1965. A new English rock group takes the world by storm. Ratcliffe Stadium, Fresno, California. The Rolling Stones live in concert. Interviews with the people who were there. It's one of those things that there's a, a view in my mind that I will never forget. Never before seen video. Relive the experience tonight only on ABC 30 Action News at 11. The Rolling Stones in Fresno. Relive it tonight only on ABC 30 Action News at 11. Okay, let's have a little fun. Tonight we're going to take a trip back in time to a memorable chapter in Fresno's musical history. We recently recovered some rare footage of a legendary band performing at Ratcliffe Stadium. We want to mention that because the film we found was silent, the audio portion has been added by us. Here's ABC 30's Dan Godwin with part one of The Rolling Stones, live in Fresno. Now if you in the mid-1960s, only one band appeared likely to challenge the Beatles in popularity, and that band was the Rolling Stones. I think their music was just a little bit, um, was a little bit more rock and roll, was a little bit more, a little harder. As a teenager growing up in Fresno, Larry Lucinian also liked the image the Stones projected, tough and rebellious. And Larry still remembers the big announcement about his favorite band. I was just amazed to see that the Stones were coming to town. Yeah, lots of screaming. Shirley Keeney remembers being inside Ratcliffe Stadium on May 22, 1965. The Stones entered in an armored car. And I think those of us who were into the British bands really knew how big it was. So I just felt that this was something I needed to go to. Jenny McGill went to the concert with three or four of her friends. Oh Jenny recalls one member of the Stones getting most of the female adulation. There was more for Mick, you know, and it seemed like it was just for Mick when he danced. And it was um, James Brown, a little bit of Elvis. Brian Jones was my favorite. Oh, I just thought he was better looking than, than the rest. By contemporary standards, ticket prices for the concert were amazingly low. For a seat in these stands, in front of the stage, the cost was just $3.50. But if you didn't mind sitting behind the band, you could get in for just a buck. In spite of the bargain prices, the crowd was smaller than expected. Only about 4,000 attended, but Fresno police still had all they could handle when a large number of mostly female fans rushed the stage. The Stones were forced to stop playing halfway through their final song. The band members made a hasty retreat into the safety of their armored car and sped off. Despite that rather abrupt ending, for at least a few of the fans in attendance, the memories of that one show remain indelible. Quite an experience, quite a fun time. It's one of those things that there's a, a a view in my mind that I will never forget. Dan Godwin, ABC 30 Action News. One of the Stones' opening acts that day was the Birds, who went on to have a legendary career of their own. Tomorrow, what happened after the Stones made their hasty exit from Ratcliffe? We'll have more of the Stones' concert later in our newscast. Angelo is just ahead with the weather. If you're listening to the music back in the mid-1960s, you may recall the Rolling Stones' one and only appearance in the Central Valley. We recently recovered some rare footage of that concert. Now, the film we found was silent, so the audio you'll hear was added by us. Here's ABC 30's Dan Godwin with part two of his special series, The Rolling Stones, live in Fresno. From the very start of their career, the Rolling Stones style of music set them apart from almost all other pop groups. It was that blues stuff that appealed to me. In May of 1965, well, we Deborah Byron was 14 years old. When she heard the Stones would be performing in Ratcliffe Stadium, she made sure to get good seats. My sister and I lined up for the concert at 5 a.m. Yeah, 
After their Fresno concert ended, the Stones returned to the hotel where they had checked in the night before. The location was the Holiday Inn at Ashland and Highway 99. The weather was warm enough for swimming, and Stones guitarist Keith Richards went for a dip. But drummer Charlie Watts, seen here in the middle, and Mick Jagger decided just hanging around the pool was relaxation enough. Now the hotel where the Stones stayed is still around, but it's since been renamed to the Brooks Ranch Inn. The next stop on the band's tour was Sacramento, so from here they went directly to the Fresno Air Terminal. My sister and I decided that we would try to see the Rolling Stones at the airport. So we drove to the Fresno Air Terminal and uh, we saw a small plane at the tower. Deborah says after several hours, the Stones and their entourage eventually arrived. And here's where the story gets really interesting. Yeah, there you yep, are. there I am. Whoa. Right there getting Brian Jones' autograph. That's me. That's you. Right there, running around. Until we contacted her, Deborah didn't realize her brush with the Stones had been filmed. You can see her here in the checked coat. Deborah managed to get the autographs of four Rolling Stones that day, all except bassist Bill Wyman. I remember asking Brian Jones what he was reading because he was holding a paperback book with nude women on the cover. And uh, he said, uh, science fiction. <laughs> Deborah still has the ticket the Stones autographed that day. The signatures are a little messy, but the authenticity can't be questioned. In the years since, Deborah has seen the Stones several times, but she says that first encounter will never be topped. Dan Godwin, ABC 30 Action News. One more note about the Stones. A couple of years ago, their bassist Bill Wyman wrote a book about the band. On page 327, there's a paragraph on the Fresno concert. Wyman quotes Fresno Bee reporter Eli Sethensich, who wrote, A peaceful show turned into a full-scale demand for puberty rights. Some of the girls in attendance did get a little bit out of control. Still to come, you're...